Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Benno's Aquatics. Today I'm just going to be going through uh, mosses and the mosses I keep and what their uses are for and just some you know quick tips about how to grow mosses, what they need to thrive and what they can be used for. So I hope you enjoy the video. Okay, so as you can see here, the, these are some of the mosses that I keep. Um, the one on the far right just here is java moss and that's just um, tied onto a terracotta pot. So I usually tie the mosses onto something to, you know, hold them together and so they don't float around, you know, get stuck in the filters and stuff like that. Um, the one in front of it, or behind it, just there, that is known as stringy moss. So it's sort of like a thinner type moss, a bit thinner than um, java moss. And this one here, I'm not actually sure what it is. If anyone could actually ID that for me, that would be great. Um, but I'll show a closer um, video of that up shortly. So people are probably wondering why do I keep tadpoles in these tubs with the mosses? Well, um, tadpoles are actually an algae eater. So what they'll do is eat all the algae off the moss and keep your moss nice and clean. So, um, other fish that can actually do that is, you know, your catfish like bristlenose placos um, and any algae eater. So you want fish that sort of, you know, scrounge through the moss, removing all that algae. Um, shrimp are also another good one um, to keep your moss clean. So this one here is the java moss. And as you can see, that's just attached to that terracotta pot with a bit of fishing line and um, yeah it makes a nice little I guess decoration to your fish tank let alone you know a haven for your fry or a home for your shrimp the next one here is that stringy moss I was talking about that's also tied on by fishing line onto a light lava rock so it's a bit thinner than the, than the um, java moss. And then this last one, if someone can ID this for me, I'm not actually sure what it is, but it looks very similar to java moss and stringy moss, so something like in between. So if anyone could ID that for me, that would be great. But as you can see, the tadpoles in here are doing their job. You know, they're keeping the moss is clean, there's no algae growing, except for very light patches. And yeah, it's turning out to be great. They're sort of working together. You know, the java moss provides a home for the tadpoles, and the tadpoles eat the algae that's grown in the java moss, and also on the side of the tubs. Okay, so people are probably wondering if I use any fertilizers, and also how good is the lighting. Um, I don't use any fertilizers on mosses, you don't need to. Um, as people know, most mosses don't need any fertilizers. They just need adequate lighting. Um, so it's not really getting that much lighting. Um, Java moss doesn't really need too much light and what most mosses don't because they grow in low light areas. So that's another good thing about growing mosses. You don't need much light. And yeah, I don't use any fertilizers. Now guys, I'm gonna show you my guppy fry tub. I'll just turn that aerator down. Um, as you can see, they're not really algae eaters, so look at that jar moss. See how it's got all the algae growing on it? Whereas if you look at this tub with the tatties in it, look how clean that java moss is. So you really do need algae eaters, especially if um, you're growing them outside in tubs because the moss will just end up getting choked by the algae, as you can see in this tub. So these are just guppies in here. That's my guppy breeding tub. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Just me um, going through some tips and tricks on growing java moss and other mosses. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel 
and um, I'll be posting more videos so stay tuned.